Namaste, dear respected audience. Welcome to my weekly program, Talk with Home. Here today, I brought new personalities from all abroad, including one professor from all the way from Kathmandu University. Uh, our professor, Dr. Beam Shrestha, has brought here some teachers and teachers training trainers from different countries, Italy and Finland. And we are going to have a really very fruitful interaction today that will uh, really focus on the disabled people, students and marginalized communities. See. And they are just going to have discussion on how to give facilities, opportunities to all those disabled students and students from marginalized communities to get enrollment in higher education and keep their further career ahead. Please, let me welcome all the participants here. Yeah, today they are going to give their own introduction on their one place. Namaste, thank you for this invitation, for this wonderful talk uh, with my colleagues from different countries. My name is Maya, I'm Dr. Maya Mahinen from Finland. I represent YAMP University of Applied Sciences in Finland and I'm sure we will talk more later about our organizations too. Thank you, Om sir. Very nice to meet you again and it's my pleasure and having you talk about bringing very important personalities from our European partners. I'm Bim Shrestha, I'm professor at Kathmandu University. I'm coordinating this program on behalf of Kathmandu University. At the same time, we have uh, other team members uh, that are Tribune University, Nepal Open University, and it's being coordinated by Ministry of Education, Science and Technology of the uh, of Nepal. Thank you. We are That's very glad, to, pleased to have uh, me, having me here in this program. Thank you. You're welcome, please. Namaste everyone and thank you for inviting me and my colleagues to this talk. My name is Elena Pacetti. I am Associate Professor at the University of Bologna, Department of Education Studies and I'm part of this team of wonderful people working for it and project. Please. Namaste. Also, thank you very much for um, inviting us. My name is Helena Vadirova. I am from uh, Masaryk University in the Czech Republic. I am senior lecturer and researcher in inclusive education and autism. Dr. Shrestha, what are you planning to go ahead with give enhancement, providing an enhancement to the students while getting enrollment with equity? Okay, so when I speak to, among the all my very uh, important colleagues, I'm only Nepal here, so let me represent the uh, entire Nepalese university system at the moment. Uh, in fact, uh, in, fact uh, in this program, we have uh, three universities Kathmandu University, Tribune University, and Pokhara University, uh, Nepal Open University, we are working together. And uh, you see, the enrollment in the higher education, even with the very normal people, is uh, very less in Nepalese context. And, uh, but think about someone with a disabilities or someone with a marginalized community who are not having enough access for education. This is a really a big gap and how to have them in higher education ensure is a very important. So this project is a structural project and whatever findings we do as a part of the program in close collaboration with experience sharing from Yamke University, University of Bologna in Italy and Mercedes University in Czech Republic. We have been able to create a database of the students who are aspiring to have their educations ensured in higher education. And with this database, uh, we like to have some sort of support center established so that these students, first we encourage them to have enrolled in higher education in a different technical and non-technical sector. And once they get in, uh, admitted in those sectors... support yeah. center with... Fully equipped. Exactly. Fully equipped. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And there has been a lot of support. I think uh, Masari can tell about the type of trainings programs and a type of uh, you know equipment that we are having. Uh, yeah, Masari and Tesri uh, Center for this uh, disabled and uh, uh, differently able people is very capable. And our faculty has got a lot of training. Probably uh, you can tell more about. Uh, and this is uh, yeah. Yep. You can say how 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 should be the what are the equipment that we are having in the support centers. I guess this project 
project is not only giving any grant to the students, stakeholders, yeah. but also all technical support. Yes, yes. 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 The project does not provide scholarship scheme. Yeah. Um, we are providing know-how and equipment for support centers uh, for students with disabilities and for marginalized groups um, together with colleagues from University of Bologna because both our universities have a long tradition in supporting students with disabilities and when I say long in the Czech Republic I mean 25 years which is almost the whole democratic life of uh, the Czech Republic uh, we have one of the largest, maybe the largest, uh, support centre for students with disabilities in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. And we offer a range of services. Um, and we are very happy that we can cooperate mm -hmm. with Nepalese partners. Um, and we have been working together for the past three years. As you can imagine, most of the time online. But via um, video conferences and online meetings and virtual tours, we were doing um, staff trainings on, uh, for example, equipment of libraries, on how to make printed materials accessible. E-library? Uh, mm. Yes, yes. How to make printed books accessible printed. for students books. who are blind. Braille books. Braille books. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, electronic books, as you yeah. say, e-library. How to make services accessible for students who can't hear, mm. deaf students. We were um, spending a lot of time discussing um, accessible environment, accessible toilets, yeah. ramps, so that even students who use wheelchair can access classes. Disabled friendly. Yes, disabled mm. friendly, mm. exactly. Yeah. So that was our part, training in um, how to provide services for students mainly with disabilities. We were also discussing with colleagues uh, and we are conducting a thorough needs analysis and based on that we provided a list of equipment for example computers, printers, scanners, braille embossers to print books in braille, uh, braille readers so that blind student can read with his fingers what's on the screen and all kinds of specialized software uh, that can transfer speech to text, text to speech and so on or can adjust the size of the font, color and other features so that students with disabilities can study themselves. The other part of the training were soft skills and understanding of inclusive education and that was conducted by the University yes. of Bologna. Hmm. Yes, this was also a very important part of the project because it's not enough just to have a support center with the best equipments you can imagine for uh, uh, disabled students and students from marginalized group because we have to create the culture of inclusion. So the main issue is inclusive education and uh, Mm. You 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 have to believe that it's everyone can be educated. So we have to eliminate all stereotypes. We have uh, to work uh, in order to create inclusive environments and an inclusive community. So the university must first of all be an inclusive community and believe that this is something possible. And uh, it's not easy, not because of Nepal, because this is not easy even in our country. Sometimes there are a lot of uh, stereotypes a lot of stigmas also about people mm -hmm. and we are facing challenges uh, because for sure uh, what in Italy or in Finland or in Czech Republic uh, is a student from a marginalized group is not the same in Nepal yeah. but we also have these challenges in our countries and so it was very important to find a lot of moments of discussion of conversation of reflection all together despite of course as uh, my colleague was saying the situation of the Covid and the fact that we were working uh, online hmm. in, in this is in spite of a very difficult situation you know, hmm. because from Kathmandu University, Trivon University, Nepal Open University somehow in Nepal uh, the Covid uh, of course it also came in a different forms and different uh, difficult situation but compared to Europe it, we were literally the mild safe. Uh, yes, yes. We really appreciate it. Uh, Maya really coordinated this program from the European side and uh, you know, this is, it has been 
Uh, no, before even the program, the mayor was with us um, working and seeing the you know the successful implementation of this program. Mm -hmm. So I think we I visited yeah. Finland and um, I got an enormous uh, support. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the in a very difficult time that time. And, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. schedule was very yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah it uh, was. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I really appreciate mayor Thank for you. Uh, Thank yeah. You. Thank and Doctor Sesta, you have got. A um, special plan for improving the learning environment also, yes? Will you please? Especially having seen Finland, of course, I have not been to, I'm sorry, I have not been to Czech Republic and yeah. Italy. Yeah. Definitely I plan to come there. Yeah. And especially Finland, uh, the learning environment is so good. It, especially the, the universities are not very high ranked. Mm. Unlike I, I study in the US and university in the US they try to be mm. good to have a in, ter in terms of infrastructure. Yeah, no no, I mean the ranking and um, universities, but their Yam University they work with the community. They want to create the best wow. environment for mm. students to mm. have better learning situations mm. over there. Mm. Exactly. And they have a good engagement. Please will yes. you explain how yeah. your yeah. philosophy of Yamak yes. University yes. is yes. the best Thank learning you. situation. Thank you. So, support centers, training and equipment has been already mentioned. But uh, as we think about all our, all these three uh, uh, four countries, we used to have very segregated systems earlier, so that all people having additional or special needs or marginalized, they were put somewhere out of sight. Yes. Nowadays, this is about inclusion, and inclusive education is it's about creating society for <coughs> for everyone. We, we speak about universalism and within this Indian project we followed or our framework was like a combined of three dimensions so policy level, cultural level and practices level and these dimensions uh, capture all actions with, which we have done until now and which will continue so, for example, at the policy level, we try to uh, increase the awareness of administration of these universities to, to create inclusive policies, so that inclusive policy will capture uh, people with disabilities, but also students coming from marginalized groups. And, and uh, speaking about the culture, di cultural dimensions, it means uh, acceptance. We have been having awareness raising events. We have been uh, the police partners have have had tours to remote areas, speaking with communities, uh, contacting schools, just to changing the mindset positive. And the third one that we have been talking already is the practices dimension. So. Uh, support centers, equipment, and and also guidance there, etc. But I think this is a good framework for for our project. Or what you think? Yeah, this is perfect, and this is something like you know, there's a lot of effort to come together. Yes. A lot of we put effort to have an opportunity to know each other and we really want to see it beyond that in a different mm. forms and different capacity mm. it is especially the Czech Republic and the mm. University of Bologna in Italy and the Yank University mm. Finland you know we were just scattered we were different type of gems scattered in different forms now mm. we have come together we really are looking for some sort of a mm. way forward you know mm. how we could uh, have a safe exit from the current uh, endeavors that we have been working on mm. in mm. future how we can have a better collaboration better cooperation mm. so that our we can have a meaningful stay yes. a meaningful existence in this part of the world yes, yes. yes. we talk a lot actually you know in this way yeah. i think that's with the czech true. republic also they are extending yeah. their program yeah. um, dr swester currently are you facing any hurdles or challenges over here to implement to, to implement because i want to draw the attention of concerned authorities right uh, this program will really very uh, ease you yeah i must tell you very frankly with uh, with my audience here and uh, in, with, the, with the concept of my other colleagues from tribune university and nepal open university this program was designed to be executed in a non-COVID situation, mm -hmm. okay. but uh, yeah. unfortunately we had to have 
all our programs exhibited in a COVID scenario. So our mode of operanda became, uh, it's a different, we had to operate uh, different ways. Mm -hmm. Mostly we had to rely upon uh, some sort of virtual mode of uh, even training, even doing classes and lectures and all these things we had to depend on. But now when we are about to we are about to come out from the virtual board, the project is going to complete. Yes. See? Yes. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is irony of the project. Uh, and, uh, but we believe we respect the guidelines from the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in Government of Nepal. At the same time, our, our partner in Europe, at the same time, mm -hmm. our funding agency who has supported this program is European Union in Brussels. So we all uh, really respect them. But at the same time, what we do believe is that uh, other things, trainings and other we could do, but due to stringent uh, government's rules and regulation in Nepal, the procurement could not be done. Mm -hmm. you know, that, is, that is that is yeah, a, that is a, that is yeah, yes. that is a one of the mm -hmm. things. So we so really the project is phase wise project, I think. No, in fact, it's not phase wise. We, we are supposed to complete our project by end of November. Yeah, yeah. November. 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 Will it be continued? So that is yeah. the question. Yeah. That is the question. So uh, you already mentioned that, uh, despite uh, quite a long COVID time, we succeeded to, to yeah. cooperate. Yeah. And I would uh, very much stress the, some values we have and principles behind. Nobody uh, dictated the values. Yeah. They just came uh, between us, and uh, I think that trust is one of them. So that learning is not not only the Nepalese partners are learning something, it's both sides. That is the, the principle number one. And it, uh, any project, especially educational projects, should be needs-based. And that, is, that has been guaranteed by the Nepalese partners in a wonderful way. We have, for example, a database of the challenges of students with disabilities and marginalized groups in, in remote areas. Yes, and ownership here in Nepal. There are several like principles. So, mm. so th this has been our our like a tool, tool to communicate together to to find uh, this uh, development in the same way. Yeah, you will, uh, you will evaluate the outcomes as well. Right? Yes, yes, outcomes. they have a outsider as ever. Yeah, they're independent evaluators. Independent, uh, independent yes. yes. He works on behalf of European EU yes. to evaluate the, some of the benchmark or some of the, yes. Yes. you know, some of the indicators. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The ratio of benefits achieved by the yeah. uh, disabled people yeah. uh, marginalized. And as you earlier mentioned, Yamt University of Applied Science is our, we are the coordinator this time. So I would like to say that the development we have done and are trying uh, is, is based on the idea that that we don't want to develop any any separate systems to anyone. Nice. This is following the universal design, so no, so that nobody will like feel isolated. Mm -hmm. So that this project is about access to education. We give this possibility, and we hope that we will get continuation later on. And we have already discussed a lot, yeah. and it would be about particip increasing participation in education. How about the participants? Hmm. No, they are fully participating or not? Uh, excuse me, who are you? Uh, disabled students. They were, so Nepalese partners yeah. made many, many, maybe 20, yeah. even more tours to remote areas. And uh, they made interviews, videos, they collected experiences and prepared database which will be handed over to the ministry. So, Dr. Sesto, so far very much satisfied? Yes. No. No. I just wanted to say that yeah, they were please. involved in various stages and yes. the last interaction with students with disabilities yeah. yes. was like two days ago in the remote campus in Dankota. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Where our colleagues were discussing yes. with them uh, yeah. their studies, their needs, challenges they face, uh -huh. support they already get, yeah. so that the support centers really fit in the life of the campuses. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Great. Yeah, this is where I, as a Helena, said, you know, because 
this on project because very ironical situations yeah, yeah. you know uh, because covid non covid and project yeah. we are just about to s yeah, start the support center and uh, the physical interaction you see this project is designed for physically challenged people and people from marginalized community mm -hmm. and during covid time even normal people became like a challenged normal people yeah. we normal people yes. got chal so many challenges we, we could not travel sometimes. we could not yes. we could not go to market yes. and all these things even normal people were challenged mm. most of the time of the execution mm. of these projects yeah. and forget about accessing and uh, having a participation of these challenged yeah. people is yes too far i mean i mean they are other part of other side of the tunnel and mm -hmm. this part still so i really feel you know today uh, i saw the um, boris and other you know they were having a very good interaction in I the dunkut outreach center mm -hmm. so they are really now seeing okay how this physically challenged people are facing the in spite of problems they have been you know doing some limited resources uh, best utilization resources available in those institutions to have them you know enroll in high educations and with this project this project is not very big project it's not a, it's not a, they will not support every because you and all it sounds mm -hmm. like a very big but just analyzing the the training need then we just supplement some of the programs mm -hmm. right we don't mm -hmm. give a lot of things well, that's great. Mm -hmm. this is just some sort of a very critical needs we identify and mm -hmm. just try to supplement mm -hmm. those things so that they become one step ahead it's not like they become completely no, supported having said a support center it's not like they fully support they give money they give equipment whatever they're not mm -hmm. no. yeah but we have also limited uh, capacity mm -hmm. within that capacity we are trying to reach the people who are not yet reached and we are trying to enhance their potential at this one level ahead. Mm -hmm. Right, so I yes, think it yeah, to, it yeah. has to go one step at a time. Yeah, yes. one step. So yeah. In this project, we're focusing on students that are actually currently studying at the universities yeah. mm -hmm. without right. any support, yeah. mm -hmm. and we hope to continue yeah. in larger services for mm -hmm. other groups of students and also work a lot on soft skills yes. that are necessary yeah. and without which, without yes. proper counselling, yes. um, yes. these services would be incomplete yes. and less effective. Mm -hmm. And according to this, I think it was also important yeah. for uh, our Nepalese colleague to go to secondary school to understand the kind of challenges the students from secondary school are facing mm -hmm. and if they would like to come to university because this can help us in providing a better service for them. Mm -hmm. So this can be one of the challenge to network more with secondary schools mm -hmm. to let them know that there will be a support center for mm -hmm. them when they come to university mm -hmm. and to in advance know mm -hmm. how we can support them. So yes, that's, that's true, that's yeah. very true. Yeah. 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 And that's all the awareness. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. all. Of our, uh, yeah, among about students, the among the families, yes. yeah. in communities. In communities. Yes. 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 So the students from secondary level are also going to have some advantages from this. Exactly. Yes. This is exactly. where next week we, yeah. this week we are going to Ilam, mm. uh, where we try to have an access for the students from the marginalized community. And there are some marginalized groups that we identified, like mm. Lepcha, and this is one of mm. the Lepcha. highly, yeah. highly marginalized community in mm. Nepal, mm. identified by constitution itself. Mm. Mm. So we try to see whether we can, because yesterday also we were saying, mm. you know, if if we can have a better education in higher education or in school education, definitely the students that is coming to university will be good. So it's already advantage. So that way we try to see some sort of marginalized students uh, who are studying in a secondary education mm -hmm. to have some sort yes. of a support center or information yes. in this yes. regard. I think we are we're going to alarm on that. One of the biggest challenges is also is the sustainability, mm -hmm. sustainability, yeah, of, sustainability. Yeah, and therefore many many projects, international okay. projects, okay. even they they fail. <laughs> so now, with the help of the Ministry of Science yeah. and yeah. Technology, we are hoping we have uh, big hopes for the ministry to yeah. ensure the sustainability, because they are partner within yeah. this project for this specific reason. Yeah.
how is the ministry uh, responding so yes, far? That's exactly, I want yeah. to come. Yeah. I, I really want with this uh, very small, you know, because very public uh, kind of a notice this one, and I must say very thankfully and very honestly, the ministry people has been very very well helpful. I see. They are so understanding. They try to because the project is not a very top priority for them. In fact, no, it's not a very big project. Mm. They have uh, several other big, big yeah. funding agencies, but still, mm. uh, the current joint secretary, Dr. Hari Lamsal, he provides us enough time. But uh, some problem is there because this is even unavoidable because we know in a bureaucracy yeah. the mm. the people keep on changing. Uh, it's an unavoidable situation. Mm. But in spite of that situation also i really thank the hard working government people mm -hmm. who really help us in a very difficult situations to make continue with this project i have faced, we have faced four joint secretaries who leads the mm -hmm. team but mm -hmm. everybody if you ask me to name i can very fully mm -hmm. name they have been so helpful mm -hmm. uh, earlier the tulsi thapalya he mm -hmm. helped us a so mm -hmm. lot now the hari lamsal he is so kind and uh, he sometimes tells me, you know, when I when I call him, every time he receives the telephone and he tells me, Bim, this is a priority of government Nepal, but you are able mm -hmm. to get the support from you. I really appreciate, and uh, but you know, people's misunderstanding mm -hmm. and others, it, I could not mm -hmm. change that mindset. But we are in the right track. Mm -hmm. So we are coming to about at the end of the time. See, uh, my dear respected guest and my dear friend, Dr. Bim Shrestha. Mm -hmm. Uh, finally, please give some positive vibes to the youth. Throughout the last three years, we were very lucky to discover your incredibly rich culture yeah. and nation. Mm. And I hope for all you young people that you will continue the work that has started here mm. and we have seen tremendous development over the three years. Mm. It really is visible in the street and education is in my opinion, the most powerful tool to make uh, the future of this country uh, bright and happy. So, fingers crossed. It was a very good <laughs> sentence what you said, so it's difficult to yes. add something. Yeah. But, of course, uh, for us working in education, we always mm. say that education is the power to change. Mm. But you can change if you believe that you can change. So, I really wish that Everyone, especially young people, can see the possibility of this change and imagine a, a world more inclusive and uh, more uh, uh, able to uh, respect everyone. Yes. Like told, uh, I told earlier, I have two hopes or wishes. The first one is for the ministry. Please ensure the sustainability of the project. And the second one, which I already mentioned, is for young people. Please contact these coordinators. Please be active. Ask for support and help. So, we really have very meaningful and fruitful discourse here. Yes. here. Yes. And we do hope that all the concerned stakeholders will get totally, completely benefited from our this interaction. Thank you for coming here. Though you have just managed your precious time for me, I'm very much glad and thankful to you. Namaste, everybody. Thank you, Thank you to you. Namaste. 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 Namaste, dear respected audience. We have just got very interesting and important uh, interaction here. Next time, I will bring another personality here uh, at the same time. Till then, goodbye, namaste.